Hey, if you didn't see this yesterday, Harry Douglas, former Atlanta Falcon, when his team traded for Matthew Judon, was fired up. Bird call! <laughs> Four-time pro bowler, Matthew Judon. Welcome to the ladder where the players play. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I went in there yelling, screaming, hugging my kids. Matthew Judon, someone that can play the run very, very well. Uh -huh. Someone that can go get the quarterback and sack him. Somebody that's not physical, but physical. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> okay. I love the enthusiasm. Okay. Harry. <laughs> Jermaine Dupree, okay. Harry. you. Why did you feel the need to buckle the chin strap? That, that's the part I find the most interesting is that. Gr Greeny, yeah. I'm just yeah. letting you know that I'm ready, baby. I'm ready yeah. for everything. It's been an unbelievable all season. We signed Kirk Cuggins, <laughs> Cousins, <laughs> a.k.a. Kirk Thuggins. We signed Mr. We drafted Mr. Durag himself, Michael Penix yeah. Jr. So now we are, not only do we have our quarterback for the now, we have our quarterback for the future. I like the draft and, and the guys that they drafted. We went and got Matthew Jadon. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Welcome to Atlanta where the play is play, baby. We don't want Greeny. We ready to roll. We ready so to roll. Good. How good? I'm with you. I'm actually, I'm, I'm with you. I think the Falcons are a sneaky, interesting pick to be way better than most people are giving them credit for. Give me the prediction. How many games do they win this year? I think they're going to win 11 games, Greeny. I really do. Now, the schedule starts off tough. You got Pittsburgh, Kansas City, and Philly. Uh, I, I believe we can do our thing uh, in two of those three games. But the schedule gets easier uh, once the rest of the schedule comes out and uh, what's already come out. But once the, uh, the rest of the games are going to, be, going to be played. So I'm really looking forward to Atlanta. They, they've been missing a quarterback, a guy to unlock all that potential that they have on offense. Now, not only do they have one, Greeny, they have two. So if something happens to the starter, it, I'm perfectly fine with the backup coming in and with his little left-handed self just throwing the ball all over the place. But we, go, we got Kirk Cousins. We're going to stick with Kirk Cousins right now. But if Michael Penix Jr. have to oh come in the goodness. game, you talk about Mr. Cool, Calm, and Collected, the best thrower of the football in this 2024 NFL draft. Here we go! <laughs> okay. Harry is fired up. All right. Let's keep the energy going with QB Quick Reads. Let's actually start with that team. D. Wood, do you believe that Kirk Cousins holds off Michael Penix the entire season? Yeah, I do. I do. I think the only way that Michael Penix sees the field is if there's a Kirk Cousins injury. Listen, this is the same Kirk Cousins that was on pace to throw for over 5,000 yards. That is best season in the NFL last season. I think he's going to bring that same play in a system that he's very familiar with down in Atlanta. They have weapons that have never achieved the sum of their parts yes. he's before. On Robinson, Let's see if oh my God. Out. Oh, Yeah, the receiver, the tight end. Yeah. Kmart, okay. you're next. Will Aaron Rodgers lead the Jets to the AFC Championship game? Good Lord, I hope so. Um, for your sake, <laughs> honestly, honestly, because I don't know. I'm worried about your heart, Greeny. Uh, here's the thing. On paper, if you just took the name Jets off of the roster, you would look top to bottom and say, this is a legit squad. Like, they actually have wonderful players that could go deep in the playoffs. Just because it's Jets, people want to say same old Jets. I think the Jets are loaded. Got to keep Aaron healthy. Okay, I love it. Harry, I'm coming to you. Is a healthy Joe Burrow the biggest threat in the AFC to Kansas City? Yeah, I agree with this wholeheartedly, Greeny. We're talking about a quarterback in Joe Burrow and this Cincinnati Bengals team, 3-1 versus Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, I think also a key piece of this is Jamar Chase. I don't know what owner Mike Brown is thinking, but you don't disrupt something, especially when you know Joe Burrow. When he's healthy, your team is a Super Bowl contender. But I like the Cincinnati Bengals being the biggest threat to the Kansas City Chiefs if you have a healthy Joe Burrow. Well, here's something else Joe Burrow is a contender for. It's an award that generally players don't want to win. Uh, but these are, according to ESPN Bet, the favorites to win Comeback Player of the Year this year. You see Rodgers is the favorite, followed by Burrow, followed by Cousins, followed by Anthony Richardson. So I asked all the members of this group to put up who they believe will be the Comeback Player of the Year this year. Kmart, which way did you vote? Always. When in doubt, Joe Burrow. To me, he's the second best quarterback in the NFL behind Patrick Mahomes. When he is healthy... He is an assassin on the football field. This guy is different. He is special. 
and he's lost in the Super Bowl by three points, and he's lost in the AFC title game by three points. This kid is different. Um, so with him healthy, I have no doubts about the Bengals. D Wood? Yeah, I'm going with Aaron Rodgers. Listen, 40 coming off an Achilles. Aaron Rodgers never played with, with, with the type of defense that the Jets have. Mm -hmm. He's going that defense is going to give him a lot more possessions. Mm -hmm. And the weapon, Garrett Wilson, yep. Brees Hall, yep. you, like, you are that little... offensive line, come on. Devontae come on. Adams. The, 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 right, right, around, right around Halloween, yeah. See, I, man, stop pandering to the host of the I show. I already stop consider it. him a Jet. Uh, Harry, <laughs> 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 Harry, you're going Joe Burrow. Yeah, I'm going with Joe Burrow. I don't think there's anyone in the NFL that plays the quarterback position from the pocket as well as Joe Burrow. Uh, but that confidence that he walks around with, it trickles down to everyone amongst that organization. Let's not forget where the Cincinnati Bengals were before they drafted Joe Burrow. He went out there and he said the Super Bowl window is always open as long as he's the quarterback. Also, we're going to Pittsburgh <laughs> live now. <laughs> and you knew that. It's home of the NFL's most interesting so and, as we now know, unaccomplished quarterback battle. Justin Fields fumbled a pair of snaps, took a pair of sacks in his Steelers preseason debut. Now, Mike Tomlin has maintained that Russell Wilson remains in pole position, but the whole thing is fascinating. So we wanted to bring in Brooke Pryor, who's, uh, you know, Brooke from our show from over all the years and does a fabulous job covering the Steelers for She's in Pittsburgh. And you have a piece up on ESPN.com about the work, the very specific work, Brooke, that Justin Fields is doing to try and win this job after what was a very rough debut. What can you tell us? Greeny, the next time that Justin Fields lines up in shotgun, I want you to look at his feet. He's going back to beginning with his right foot forward, and then when he receives the snap, he's flipping it back and moving his right foot back and left foot forward. That is the natural base that he had when he played at Ohio State and when he was in his first year in Chicago. He went to his quarterback's coach, Oliver Bozeman, in January and said, hey, OB, I want to get back to that place where I was playing and I was dominating. And for him, that's going back to the natural stance after the last two years in Chicago, Luke Getze and Matt Eberflus reversed that stance. And because he reversed it, it eliminates that half second of thinking, of processing. All of that should help with his timing, his decision making, things that he was widely knocked for in Chicago. That should be eliminated here in Pittsburgh. And by the way, the Pittsburgh coaching staff isn't messing with his stance. The staff said, hey, Justin, close your eyes. What feels natural? And for him, that was starting out with the right foot forward. And they said, great, we're going to go with that. Isn't that fascinating? You know, we've been talking here about the impact that having all these different coaching staffs and all these different offensive coordinators, and another way of putting that is all these cooks in the kitchen can have on a young player, and here he is trying to go back to the basics. And Dan Orlovsky was making the point when he was on here after the preseason game the other day, um, Brooke, that his – back pedal, or that's the word I'm looking for, his drop back did not match with the receiver's routes. That if you looked at the way he was dropping, that his timing was not matching up with the receivers. And that's another example sometimes of inexperience in an offense and all that sort of thing. How, how much, now I'm asking you a complicated question, but you're there. Can you gauge how much those mistakes the other night impacted the way the Steeler coaching staff views his chances of winning this job? You know, I don't think it has an impact on the chances of him winning this job because this is still Russell Wilson's job to be the starting quarterback in week one. I know the Steelers have not come out and said that, but they did release a depth chart. And when I asked Mike Tomlin if Russell Wilson still had that pole position, he said, did you see the depth chart? That's real. And that depth chart said Russell Wilson is QB1 despite him not practicing because of that calf injury early in camp. Wilson, though, has been a full participant the last couple days in camp. Mike Tomlin said that he would be available for the Steelers' preseason game against the Bills on Saturday. Hasn't said if he's going to start. But I also asked Russell Wilson, you know, how do you balance playing in that preseason game despite dealing with this calf injury? How do you balance knocking the rust off of the timing while also not wanting to get hurt? And he looked at me very seriously and said, I don't play in fear. I am not a fearful player. So he's not worried about it. It sounds like he wants to give it a go, but that's going to be up to Mike Tomlin and the coaching staff. All right, well, I'll keep a very close eye on this. It's, it's a really interesting battle. It's taken twists and turns we didn't see coming immediately. I also want you to hear from Lou. Lewis Riddick. So he was on here yesterday and he was very fired up about what he described as the microscope that Justin Fields plays under. Listen. 
This guy takes more crap mm -hmm. from people as far as them constantly trying to blow holes in his game to where now they're sitting there going, and I've seen, I've seen some of the discourse on this. This is why he shouldn't start. Mm -hmm. This is why Russ should start. But to, I mean, it's just, it just, to me, it's, it's annoying that we pinpoint certain people to hang this kind of stuff on. So that's all fair. Now, Brooke, I think, has just kind of changed the conversation, though, because that's so interesting to me. D. Wood, when you hear a quarterback in his fourth year and the coaching staff, now we're all of a sudden talking about what foot he's going to start with. Is he going this way and then this way? Is it, what does that say to you when a quarterback, again, in his fourth year in the National Football League, we're going back to that level of basics three weeks before the regular season starts? To show you how much of a disservice he, what has happened in his, in his career prior to his arrival to Pittsburgh. I mean, we're talking about fundamental things that these guys should have an understanding of. And here it is. And it goes back to what you said earlier, Kimberly, oh. how all the change that was going on in Chicago, mm. the different coaches, what are you talking about? Offensive coordinator, quarterback coaches, yeah. all these different co coaches, they implement or do different things as far as players are concerned. So now you're, you, you know, you're Justin Fields, you go to Pittsburgh, and they're like, wait a minute. All this stuff that's been fed into this kid, yep. we need to strip it all down and basically build it back up. And so, yes, I think that's why we, you know, you hear Lewis really talk about it's kind of unfair the way we've been just, been, you know, been coming at Justin Fields because look at all the change that this young man has experienced in it throughout his young career. Yes. Here's the problem, though, mm -hmm. Kmart, is that. I, I can't tell you how to coach a quarterback, mm -hmm. but I can tell you history says mm -hmm. that when careers start like this, very rarely do they wind up where they otherwise could have. I'm not saying it never happens, but it is the exception, not the rule, mm -hmm. that when you are, and Brooke, that is such an interesting report, when you are deciding three weeks before a, a guy's fourth season begins, which foot he's going to begin moving back with, very rarely does that guy wind up reaching his full potential. What I, what I took from what Brooks reporting said was the coaches said, hey, Justin, what feels natural to you? Right. Let's help you. What what works for you? And that, to me, is good coaching. You look at your guys, you look at the skill set that they have, and then you coach towards that.